when we first started talking about immunology, I pointed out four very important features of immune system. Memory, distinction of self and non-self, diversity, and specificity. So let's look at the three of these features sequentially. The first feature we are going to talk about is immunological memory. Let's look at that. Our immune system also has a memory just like our nervous system. Our immune system can remember prior experiences of encounter with a particular antigen which for example may originate from a pathogen. First exposure to antigen A for example immune response appears after several days it rises rapidly and exponentially and then gradually it declines. The second exposure to the same antigen, the lag period, I'll show you a graph of this also, the lag period is much shorter and response is much greater, indicating animal remembers its first exposure to that particular antigen. In our case, it is antigen A. If an animal is given a different antigen, two different antigens, antigen A and antigen B at the same time, the response is the typical primary response and not the secondary response, showing that our experimental animal specifically remembers its first encounter with antigen A. Since the antigen B was the antigen it encountered for the first time, it did not have the secondary immune response. For example, you can see there's a graph. It shows the first exposure of the animal to antigen A. The immune response is gradual, it rises and then it gradually declines. So there's a sharp increase in immune response, then the decline is more gradual. At another point in time, this animal, for example, after 40 days, this animal is again given antigen A and also antigen B at the same time. So as you can see, response to antigen A is much greater as compared to antigen B. So this is our secondary immune response. This was a primary immune response and the response to antigen B is also the primary immune response. So our immune system, or in this case, the animal's immune system remembered. Our immune system can also remember if we encounter a particular antigen. So, what is the cellular basis of immunological memory? First of all, we have a naive cell which when encounters antigen for the very first time, it divides. For example, let's say if it is a B cell, it divides into two different types of cells. One is a memory cell, the other is a vector cell. A vector cells, in case of B cells, are the plasma cells which have a job to produce antibodies and release in the system. So two types of cells are produced from the naive cell, memory cells and the factor cells. Effector cells are short-lived, they produce a lot of antibodies and they die off gradually and once they die off the primary immune response shuts down. Memory cells however are much longer lived and it is because of these memory cells after the first exposure greater number of these memory cells will be produced and they will they are present in the system the second time the antigen is encountered by by a particular animal the memory cells it will be easier for memory cells to to transform into the effector cells that is why we see such a sharp and more robust immune response the second time the same antigen is encountered by the but that particular animal so here's the cellular basis of immunological memory you may not remember getting your first shots your vaccination against a particular pathogen but basically doctors exploit this phenomena immunological memory they use this as a tool to make people give immunity to people against certain pathogens so for example people get inoculations or vaccinations for different diseases some of them are mentioned on the slide basically the principle is simple doctors are introducing 
antigens from these pathogens into their patients and in response to those antigens patients produce effector cells and also memory cells so once there is an actual infection of that particular pathogen the body of their patient or our bodies have enough memory cells that they would have a rapid and robust response to that particular pathogen and before that pathogen can take hold into the host it is neutralized and destroyed so that is basically what we do when people are vaccinated there's another kind of disease there are two types of vaccinations in this case we are giving antigens to patients in some cases if person has not been inoculated or vaccinated against a particular pathogen and there's an acute infection that patient rather than receiving a vaccination receives the antibodies against that particular pathogen for example someone has contracted tetanus that person was not vaccinated against for tetanus so what do we do we are not going to again introduce an, uh, antigens from a tetanus bacteria and hope that there will be a robust response it doesn't work that way those patients are given antibodies rather than the antigens of that pathogen these people are given antibodies against that particular pathogen so where do these antibodies come from one of the ways you can make these antibodies is by hybridomas for example we are talking about tetanus if we want to make tetanus antibodies tetanus antigens will be introduced into an animal that animal will produce b cells which are making antibodies that can recognize that particular pathogen so b cells will be isolated from the spleen of these animals that's where a lot of b cells reside these b cells will be selected who have on their surface they're, they're decorated by antibodies against for example tetanus in our case these b cells will be fused with a type of cancer cell called myeloma cell cancer cells as we know have ability to divide and divide their immortal cells they can keep on dividing and therefore when the b cells fuse with the cancer cell they also become immortal they will continue on dividing and producing antibodies when that happens these special type of fused b cells they are grown in culture and the media which contains the antibodies is removed and antibodies are isolated from these media and they are purified and given to patients so some of these cells of course can also be frozen and they last a long time so this is another way this immunological memory can be exploited for the benefit of people so we have talked about one very important feature of uh, immune system which, which is memory we will look at the other features uh, in the next module